Good morning. Welcome as we turn to Genesis chapter 11, verse 1. And the whole earth was one language. There was no press one for English. And one speech. Everybody understood each other. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar. Now, if you look over here, in Foss's Bible Dictionary, a region of Mesopotamia, a plain between Tigris and Euphrates. That's Iraq. Here the rebels, see that? The rebels, against God's will, built the Babel Tower. Okay, I want you to get that. Shinar. And they dwelt there. They lived there. And they said one to another, Go to. Let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. Brick is not natural made. Brick is man-made. Man-made. Man makes brick. Man cultivates brick with his hands as Cain cultivated his fruit basket, bringing it to God where there was no pleasure. We get a man made substance in the land of Shinar associated with Babel. Rebelling against God. They had brick for stone. Stone is natural. Brick is not. It's clay. And then it says they had slime for mortar. That's not a very good building material. I don't know if I could properly say the word Home Depot, but it's in good content. I don't think there's many people who go to Home Depot and say, hey, i like to have a bucket of slime so I can build a brick structure. No, you're going to go to Home Depot and you're going to say, let me get some proper cement. So we move on. And they said, go to. That word go is in, interesting in the Bible. Jesus tells the Christians to go preach the gospel. Here you got men say, go, let's make a building product of clay with a weak foundation of mortar. And let us build a city. Now, you know, the first city in the Bible is built by a murderer. Cain, again, shows up. And a tower. There we go. How about a steeple? Church tower, church steeple. In a city, listen, that's one of the first things they did when they came to America and they come to a region. If you know your history, they come to an area, they're going to build a city. The first place they build is a meeting house. And the meeting house would be the source of religion, city business, a city hall, meetings, a central point building. Whose top, the tower, may reach unto heaven, not God. The space program of all the nations that have an active space program are building buildings and towers to get to heaven without God to disprove God by trying to find life from evolution 
in the source of the outer space. They're not trying to get to God. They're trying to get to heaven, man-made building material of slime in the land of Shinar, Iraq, Babylonia, Babylon, let us and you find let us many times in the book of the Hebrews. But here, let us make a name. Catholic, Presbyterian, Baptist. Give a name to a religion, the Mormons, where their buildings have a tower built by man who reaches up to the heavens. In the region of Iraq, where there's rebellion against God, at least we be scattered abroad, scattered upon the face here. You know, we don't want to be, you know, displaced. We don't want to have a division, though God has a division among men and will. But we want to get together as a congregation of people in a building with a tower getting to heaven without God. I'm just reading the scriptures. And the Lord, verse 5, came down to see the city and the tower, or steeple, which the children of men builded. God said to the Holy Trinity, let's get down there and see this structure. And you would think, oh, wow, God is pleased. Verse 6, and the Lord said, behold, the people is one. True, unity. They're Baptists. They're Catholics. They're Mormons. But they're not one. <laughs> They are all one language. You don't need to press one for English. And this they begin to do, verse 6. And nothing will restrain from them, which they have imagined to do. And God's imagination, the book, early book in the Genesis, is they're evil, violence, wicked, which brought the flood. The man's heart, Jeremiah says, is, is wicked. Verse 7, let us go down. Let us, that's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Come on, let's go and go down. And confound the language. So let's see, let's take that word there, confound. And we'll look it up in Webster's Dictionary. To mingle, blend, and different things. God's going to say, okay, at this tower built by man-made materials of slime, of a tower and a, a, a steeple, God says we're going to have to press one for English. Look at, look at Webster's 1828 Dictionary number two, to throw into disorder. So you're going to foundation your church steeple, your church tower. And we've only read a few verses so far. We've got a, few, a lot more. And I had a, I had a man pre say to me that the church tower points people to Jesus. Oh, our church tower points people to Jesus. Listen. I grew up in New London, Connecticut, St. Mary's Catholic Church. In New London, Connecticut. And it had many towers. It had many steeples. And that church building never pointed me to Jesus Christ. I'll tell you what pointed me to Jesus Christ. April 25th, 1987, when a man opened up a King James Bible, not a tower, 
none steeple. And he showed me that I was a sinner. I was going to hell. And I believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, go in the world and preach the gospel. And when you got a congregation say, oh, look at our steeple. Look at our church tower. They're bringing you all the way back to Shinar. Genesis 11. This is the foundation of a church tower, a church steeple. So the Lord scattered them, verse 8, abroad upon the face of the earth, and they left off build the city. They didn't complete the job. They did not finish the job. God came down and said, boom, scatter yourselves. Disorder. Around this building was a tower with a steeple, a phallic symbol of the male penis. Stalin said penis. Well, that's what the symbol is. That church tower, that church is nothing but the representation of China, of Babylonia, of Babylon, and we're not done yet. Of God's, plural, and goddesses, plural, worship of sex. No, oh, you know our church. Listen, there was a time in church history that a church tower, a church steeple, and a bell was the alarm clock. When people did not have alarm clocks, it was a call to the assembly of bringing people together when they had no wristwatch. We don't need that today in our churches. We have wristwatches. We have our cell phones. We have all kinds of timepieces to know it is time to go to church. And the time that we have all these periods of, of timepieces and people don't go to church and they're still those steeples. You can have a good from an evil. But you got to look at the foundation. You got to look at the structure. And I ain't talking about the building. I'm talking about the structure of where did it come from? Shinar. And the name of it is called Babel. There it is. Confounded. Confusion. Confusion. Your church tower, your church steeple is based upon confusion. So, we'll move to Genesis 10. We'll go backwards. Genesis 10, 10. And we'll start with verse 6. The sons of Ham, African people. Ham is the land of Africa. Cush, Mesriam, Put, and Cana. That's the land that God gives or will give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the sons of Cush, Sheba, Havilah, Septa, and Rema, Septika. The sons of Rema, Sheba, and Dedan. And Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one. Let's look at the word mighty. Let's show where it first shows up. So some people won't believe it. You can see down here mighty. And there were giants in Europe in those days, down here at the bottom of my screen, who, yeah. and also after that, the sons of God, fallen angels, not the children of Seth, not the children of them, Fallen angels, and if you teach wrong, you're going to go wrong, and you're heading into the Bible wrong. These are the fallen angels. Came unto the daughters of men, and they bare children unto him, and the same became mighty men. There's the first time mighty shows up. 
men of own, men of renown, Zeus, Pegasus. Uh, I'm trying to think of some names. Uh, Olympus. Uh, I got wrong. Um, the great gods, Eros, Neptune. All the Greek and Roman mythology, Genesis 6 4, not the children of self. And Cush begat Nimrod, he began to be a mighty one in the earth. Verse 10. That's the second time he shows up. And then verse 9, he was a mighty hunter. And you, you see the focus around the fallen angels, their children, Nimrod. And then the next time it shows up in Genesis 18, 18, it's the mighty nation that will be called Israel of Abraham. But when you got the word mighty, you've got fallen angels, their children, the daughters of men, and Nimrod. And chapter 10, verse 8, and Cush begat Nimna, a mighty one in the earth. He was the mighty hunter before the Lord. Esau was a mighty hunter too. Wherefore he said, even Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. He's given a title. Nimrod was no head, the mighty hunter of God. Isn't one of the constellations called a hunter? And his beginning of his kingdom was Babel. There we go. Babel that we've been reading about. Church tower, church steeple, land of Sinar, man-made brick, slime. And we got Nimrod, whose kingdom is Babel, which is Babylon. In the land of Shinar. This is the foundation of your church tower. This is the foundation of your group of people coming together in one building built by man to get to heaven without God. The Catholic universal church, Catholic means universal, is to gather together not to get to God, get all together to get to a kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, where the Pope is the ruler of all, and Mary sits the queen of heaven. And when you got Nimrod, you got Tammuz. And when you got Tammuz, you got Christmas. And when you got Christmas, you got Estar, which is called Easter. And you got the paganism that's in the Baptist churches. That we got to make a name for ourselves. And today in 2021, you got to have a church sign in front of a building today to say, this is the XYZ Baptist Church. And yet the characteristics of non-denominational and oh, the evils of non-denomination and the very fact is that many of your Baptist churches today, the sign that should be in the front of the property would be the XYZ Baptist Catholic Church or the XYZ Catholic Baptist Church. And the very fact is, if you go down, you come out of my property, you turn left, undone, and you keep on going down straight, you will come to a church that is a Baptist church, and it has practice of the Catholic ways, feasts, traditions that I passed, I posted a, a, a few weeks ago, a Baptist church on their signboard says, we're going to celebrate Good Friday. And you got Baptist churches today with steeples like the Catholics and the Mormons, and they've got their Valentine's Eros, Cupid. They got their Easter Estar celebration. Some of them got Good Friday now. Some of them will have their, you know, their 40 days of Lent. And then you got the Christmas celebration. 
And then you got the honoring of the dead people. This is, this is, this is, I grew up 17 years as a Polish Roman Catholic. Now I am saved. I My name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. I am a doctor of theology. I have studied two Babylons. I have studied Hislop. I have studied the book of uh, Fox's Book of Martyrs. I am a student of church history. I know what I'm talking about when I say that these churches today of Baptists, they need to name also the title of Catholic. And I am going to tell you that in 2021, that steeples, the phallic symbol of the male penis, is unnecessary and might quite be a sin. Because we don't need church bells. I grew up again in New London, Connecticut. There were two great Catholic churches, and they their building and the chimes would go every hour. You don't need that. If I'm walking down the street, I don't need a church tower to say it's two o'clock. I just look at my watch. I pull my cell phone out. It's got the time. My tablet has the time. My computer has the time. That's not needed no more. And when you run that church steeple and the church tower to what the Bible said, we're about the Bible, aren't we? Not traditions. Where Jesus said there are traditions set forth by man that is against God. We'll move on. Matthew. Well, actually, let's do let's do Genesis 14 while we're here. Genesis 14. I forgive you for I ask you to forgive me for my voice. I've been sick. Uh, so my voice is gonna go. If I have to, I may have to get a drink. Please forgive me. So Genesis 14:1. And we don't want to read all this. 14, I, I got 41. All right. It came to pass in the days of Arvatho, king of Shinar. There is Shinar. And a bunch of kings, kings of nations. Verse 2. And they made war with Beller and other kings of nations. In verse 3, they joined together. Verse 12, uh, 4, excuse me, verse 4. 12 years they served Kadar and Amir. In the 13th year they rebelled. 13, rebellion, does that sound like, like a civil war thing? Don't tread on me. In the 4th year, verse 5, King Kadar and the king were with him, smote, and there's a battle. What is Genesis 14 and Shinar? That is the First World War. Or actually, it could be the Second World War. The First World War is when Cain killed a quarter of the population when he killed his brother over religion. God accepted Abel's offering. He did not set the religion of Cain, and Cain killed. God's man. One quarter of the population, Genesis 4, was killed. World War One, World War Two, Shinar, Genesis 14, verse 1. Now, if you go back to the Bible study before we go in for it, the name given by Nimrod. The founder means the gate of the gods. It is too. Small g. Or simply of God. Who's the God? Nimrod. 
Nimrod's a god. Tammuz. Women weeping for Tammuz who died. You go go to my website. Get to study about Tammuz. Get to study about Christmas. Get to study about Easter. Find out the truth. That Baptist churches are teaching the ways of Babylonian, Egyptian, and Roman, and Catholic when they bring in Easter and Christmas and Valentine's and steeples and towers. Again, I'm going to say it, not because I, I like to say the word, but phallic symbol of the penis. Matthew. Now let's steal from Let's steal four. Let's steal from the Jews, shall we? Verse four, Matthew 4, 4. Oh, where was it? No. Matthew 5, 4, 5, excuse me. And the devil, oh, ho, ho, they're saying, takes him to the holy city, Jerusalem, and setteth him, Jesus, on the pinnacle, or pinnacle of the temple. Here. God's temple in the time of Jesus Christ, there is a, a, a structure, a tower of the temple. You want to show me where that structure, that pinnacle, that tower is in the tabernacle that Moses built? You want to show me where that is? Now, there were poles. They had they had the the, uh, the the curtains. There was a frame and structure of the holy place and the most holy place, but there wasn't a tower. There wasn't a structure. There wasn't erected penis. And when you go back into the Bible and you study Solomon building the temple of God, you want to find out where that where that pinnacle is. You want to show me where that tower is. It's not there. And that if you were to see a picture of, of India, the, the nation, you would see buildings that are around and they got towers. And you're to look at the structure of Islam and their buildings and they got towers. And you look at the structures of the buildings of the Morons or Mormons and they got towers. And you look at the structures of the buildings of the Catholic and they got towers. You got a poor Mexican city that is just gross out in food and, and starvation and just poverty. And in the midst of that place, there's a big Catholic building with towers. And that, according to a man, a Christian that told me, those towers, those steeples, those those things are, are to point to God. And I say bull, as in the bull, the calf that Aaron made. That even Satan took Jesus to the tower at the temple. Scripture with scripture. The facts are facts. Well, you know, the sons of God, they weren't. The, yeah, okay, yep, sure. Anything to water down the Bible so you can keep what you like, what God doesn't approve. Because when God came down, the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit came down. He put the whole thing into division, scattering, just confusion. That's the name of Babel. Confusion by God. God didn't bring bring of a unity of the gathering of the congregation. He scattered them. How's he do it today? Church splits. Churches are closing. I'll point you to God. You know how many churches today with steeples in 2020 and 2021 are now closed? And you drive down the street with your family in the car and you drive by a church with a steeple. Oh, look, Jesus. 
I say, uh, look, bull. It points you to God. It points you to Jesus. Like I said, when I come from New London, Connecticut, they shut down some of the, 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 the bell ringing. It became a nuisance. And they'll say, well, there are bells in heaven. Book, chapter, and verse, please. I mean, this is the truth. You don't want the truth because you want to keep your sin. And as I always say, I like it. Is the flame that will fire the Christian's work of wood, hay, and stubble. And you're going to be mad at me because I kicked your steeple. And I'm going to tell you that you don't know your Bible. You have watered the Bible. And you need to get in some serious prayer. And let me give you a verse over here one last time. I love how I can do the verses here. Let me give you a verse over here. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You say a steeple? Yes. And if you say your steeple or tower, if we say we have not sinned, there's nothing wrong with the steeple. There's nothing wrong with Easter. There's nothing wrong with Christmas. There's nothing wrong with Babylonia. There's nothing wrong with the Egyptian. There's no nothing wrong with, with the Roman. There's nothing wrong with our Baptist church. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. You reject everything I told you, and everything I told you is the word of God. Paul, why persecute thou me? Paul didn't persecute Jesus. Yes, he did. 